gonna say, not that I require you guys to move, but it is a little interesting to have you guys like comment and laugh and like your entire. <laughs> I can't see any of you guys. Yep. You dumb box. Whoa. Whoa. That was you. That's some strong what? words. That was that you. When I called mom that? Yeah. Well, I just called her a box. I didn't call her a dumb box. I think you called her a stupid box. <laughs> and when I didn't know what a box meant? Yeah. <laughs> this was years and yeah, years ago. We he was like truck. 10 years old. What is a box mean? Vagina. Vagina, yeah. Oh. So yeah, yeah, we're in the car, and all of a sudden, my mom says, "I'm like, that's a that's a dumb box." And I'm like, and "You're she, a dumb box. You're a dumb box." <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> um, we're live. Did you want to fl flip? Are we doing anything? Oh yeah, can you just flip that screen toward us? And uh, yeah, we're so we're live. We, we are live. Yeah, doing that. Welcome yeah. to Two Rights Make a Wrong. Um, uh, that is Daniel. That's Russell. And we are here once again with our very good friends, Lilo and Nigel. Give them a round of applause. Oh, we're going to start over. Oh, we're starting over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. And we're live. And we're live. Yep. Do we just, do we need to do that? Yeah, we can do it once. I, I, like. <laughs> Welcome to Two Rights Make a Wrong. That's Daniel. Russell. And uh, we're here with our good friends, uh, Lilo and Nigel, again, helping us out um, by just being, just being helpful. Moral support and, um, and yeah, he pushes buttons. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to get a camera on them or no? What's that? Do you want to get a camera on them or no? With audio? Do you want to do that? Maybe, maybe eventually, yeah. Well, right now, do you or no? Do you want to like, or you like? What do you want? The GoPro? No, the the computer. Like I talked about before. Talked oh. about it. Oh, like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. All How right. many times? I. Yeah. All right, we'll start again. I mean, this but all right, we're still figuring things out here. Yeah. Because we're just bad at this. Yeah. It takes time. Um. Anyway, I guess uh, first things first. I need to apologize. Who are you apologizing to? Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh, Dwayne, the Rock Johnson. Uh, I apparently, uh, I think we may have, I think I might have said I wanted to fight him. You may have. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, a, I'm sorry, the Rock. He does not want to fight you. I don't want to fight you. You would die. I don't know if I'd die. You'd lose. I, th I feel like the Rock's too nice. He That's wouldn't true. kill me. That's probably true. But Kev, uh, Kevin Hart, on the other hand, would kill you. Yeah, Kevin Hart would probably just kill me. <laughs> I don't know if he could fight me. Maybe Kevin Hart's pretty jacked to too. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <jacked>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. But yeah, I mean, so I'm not fighting The Rock. That's good. I wouldn't advise that. So. How would I fight The Rock? I don't know. Probably like this. What do you, What is that supposed to mean? I don't. You defense and offense at the same time, protecting your pretty face because that's what makes you the money here, and then you get to fight him at the same time. I don't know. Do you even know how to fight? Do you even know what a fight is? Yeah. Do you know how to fight? I mean, yeah. Because you, you don't know how to jump. No. So. I'd probably cup his balls. Cup his balls. That would throw him off, right? I mean, maybe. I'm, who knows? I don't know how often The Rock has his balls cupped. Well, I bet his wife cups his balls every night. Well, then it probably wouldn't catch him that off guard. Well, for me to c c cup his balls? I, I don't know. Rock, let me cup your balls. Anyway, how how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are yep. you? I'm doing all right. Um, just got some food. Yeah. It's getting later in the day. Culver's. It's a little Culver's. later in the day compared to normal. It is. It's 
Five o'clock. Yeah. Which is nice. It gave me some time to wake up. Yeah. We've got Stormy here again. He's going to come join us. Looks like a s- otter. A sexy little otter. Yeah. That is why he's named Stormy. Is that why he's named Stormy? He's you named him Stormy after C-Lab 2021? Yeah. Okay. I did. Because of the whole Black Stormy Black joke. Stormy. So for you, for you guys that don't know this, C Lab twenty twenty one was a cartoon on Adult Swim Cartoon Network back in the early two thousands, and it was a parody of a show called C Lab twenty twenty that appeared in the sixties, and it was the first show on television with a multiracial cast as a cartoon. As far as I know, period. Oh, you're okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, it's fast track to the year 2000, and William Street gets a hold of this, and they make their parody called C-Lab 2021. And there are two characters in the show named Debbie. And they happen to call uh, one of the ladies Debbie, and they call the other lady Black Debbie because she is black. And... Um, There was an episode where White Debbie was having a fit, and uh, they were asking about it, and one of the dumb characters in the show was like, well, we don't have to call her White Debbie. I know she's white. And and, uh, the other characters were really offended by that, and they were like, "That's, that's not cool. What if we called you White Stormy? And he goes, you mean... There's a black Stormy? <gasps> and black Stormy is currently trying to break my TV. <laughs> so uh, I did just look it up, though. Uh, we talked about this show on the last episode. Uh, I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy is the first show to have a multiracial cast in 1951. So, Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Now... The, it might be the first show with, like, black on it. C-Lab 2020. Well, there's more than this that as well. Well, right. But, I, but like, I don't know what I Love Lucy really had in, in all the episodes. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just... Well, yeah. Ricky was a Cuban. Right. It's just, and this cat Fred and really Ethel were just white. Yeah. Um... So yeah, so but yeah, C Lab twenty twenty one though was exactly the animations of C Lab twenty twenty. Um, they just dubbed over some it. Some of the episodes, there was like one or two episodes that was the exact. Otherwise, everything else was like they just cut and did their own animations. Oh, did they really? I thought it was all the exact because I remember the one episode which it was the whole episode was the same. The only thing they changed was the audio. Well, the audio, but the only thing they changed as far as animation went was it was like a fuel cell or something like that in the original one, and they changed it to the, an easy bake oven. No, it was a seismograph. It was they didn't change the animation. It was just a box, and it was a box, and that's why they called it an easy bake oven. Is because oh. it was like this pink box that the squid was attacking. Oh, I thought they actually changed it to an easy bake oven. No. But yeah, but that's what they had to rescue from under the sea was an yeah. easy bake oven. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we should bring back Sea Lab twenty twenty one. Yeah. And space goes coast to coast. Oh, man. Imagine the Sea Lab 2024. <laughs> <laughs> like, all of a sudden, they, like, that's when they finally go home. Oh, my God. This is how Sea Lab 2024 works. They finally get commissioned to be able to go home in the year 2024. And they go up, they go up to the surface, and this is when they realize the world has been fucked by a pandemic. And now, the whole point of the show originally was that they spent a year in the sea lab underneath the water, and they went crazy because they were just isolated. So that's the whole point of Sea Lab 2021. Oh, is it? Okay, that's the point, is that it it is actually a continuation off of Sea Lab 2020. Yeah. And they just went nuts because they were all, like, just, they were the only people down there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's the whole point. And that's actually the funnier point about it is the longer you watch the series the longer the more you can see them like delve into their dementia okay all of them okay 
And yeah, and then it would be kind of funny for them to come up to the surface to find that the world is just as crazy as they are now. And they have to adjust or whatever. No, they don't well, have, to oh, adjust. They don't have to adjust. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah. that's uh, C Lab. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I watched it all. I just didn't know all that whole backstory to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. There's some good shows on that that on early back in the day. that early. 2000s era of Adult Swim was the best. Yeah, I mean, it really started a lot. Honestly, it started. I think, I mean, there was things like The Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead beforehand, but it really like popularized adult cartoons. It uh, popularized anime. Um, like it really, it really did a lot for like a lot of the media consumption that exists today. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. I don't know if it really helped a lot of people's senses of humor. <laughs> like back in the day, that type of sense of humor was cool because it was rare and it was like weird to see and like a pleasure to see people think in that manner. But now that's just how people think normally without it trying to be a bit. And it's like worrisome. Yeah, a little bit. Makes sense. Yeah. We were talking, um, I brought this up a couple of weeks ago um with Lilo but we were saying something like um the current brand of some of these people on the internet they're just fucking horrible and i said yeah well that's what you get from an entire generation of people that was raised on Viva La Bam <laughs> like when that was their young like that's what their source of in- like that was the biggest show for like 6 years and it was just about a dude beating the shit out of his dad like yeah that's where they get their sense of humor from now i don't know if that's true and the reason why i'm going to say that is because that's what that was that's what we grew up on yeah, but we were a little bit older at that point like we were already like formed and developed oh, for the most part so by you the think, time that you think came. like so you think like 6 year olds were watching the show yeah really yeah oh, oh. okay i'm not going to say they weren't or were <laughs> but to, mo- most people most people and their parents, like, were not as sheltered as we were growing up from things like that. A generation younger, though. Or are but you talking about are you talking about our generation? I'm, I'm talking about almost everybody. Oh, I'm not sure if that's... I mean, from people that I know, people that I know, they well, were... Yeah, in your Christian communities. No, but, like, people were watching... Uh, uh, or weren't watching like South Park or whatever like that. Like Dad had South Park on when we were kids. Yeah, and he got yelled at. Well, yeah, but then he, but then Mom just let it happen. <laughs> so like it just stayed on the TV. Yeah, I don't know. I think I was well above eighteen before I started watching uh, South Park regularly. Yeah, I mean regularly, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I guess just the stuff was just on occasionally. But yeah, there was like there was a prime time TV. We'd go upstairs, play video games upstairs, and Mom and Dad would turn on their shows. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know if that's common, I guess. There were shows that kids weren't allowed to watch, but I don't know if, like, we were just, we were, like, segregated, the right word. Like, we were just... Segregated, I guess, maybe. What, what's the, we were just sent away as kids. Like, we were, like, <laughs> go to bed, go to your rooms, play your video games, go play on the TVs, whatever. Well, now it's always, I've, I'm always gone. I've, Wait, al- I've been gone. Like, I'm, I've always been one to be out of the house. Well, right, but I'm talking about, like, when we were kid kids yeah i like we had the cul-de-sac we had a neighborhood i would yeah we'd be gone we yeah. had that the, the the native the native burials and in, in the farmland yeah. behind, like we would go explore the these oh yeah abandoned cottages we did that too well the one down in the in the valley did you ever go to the one house down in the valley i don't know maybe, maybe probably went down there and that was i don't know it's freaky. weird that you're saying valley there was this valley in the, in the middle <laughs> of the We're in Wisconsin. Line. There's no such thing as a valley here. It was a negative hill. <laughs> there was a reverse hill. Like, it was... Um, but, yeah, but we went... Reverse hill. That's just a hill. But then... But it was, a, like, a bowl. So, like, it was a hill on all all around it. You go down to the middle of it, and there was a hill on all sides of you. But there was an old house down there. Is that, like, called a gulch? I thought it was a valley. <laughs> That's why it ends me calling it a valley. A well, valley exists on mountains. In mountain ranges. Can can we have someone look up what a valley is? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
hey, it works. Like, we, uh, this is something that we look up all the time between me and my A so gulch. What's a, but what's a valley then? Because it's a gulch is a valley, so what's a valley? A square is a rectangle. <laughs> it is. But a rectangle is not a square. It's true. A low area of land between hills or mountains, typically with a river or stream flowing through it. Okay. okay so so it, it might be a valley. It could have been a valley. Loosely a valley. Okay. So maybe a valley. And maybe. <laughs> maybe. Definitely not a hill. You're just a grass bowl. A grass bowl. It was a grass bowl. So this house was down in this grass bowl and it was definitely haunted. We had we got locked in the basement when we went down there. We went no one lived in it. We went down there. We walked through the basement door and all of a sudden we heard a door shut and we were locked in the basement for a while. We heard footsteps upstairs and then finally the door unlocked. But there was this staircase that went up to it was like underground through the like through the valley hill that went up to like this thing that looked like a uh, it looked like a outhouse essentially but it was just a door with the staircase in it that went down to this basement so we finally got out this door ran up the staircase so you believe in ghosts yes but and then so what happened was then a week later or two weeks later we went back because we were stupid little kids to this haunted house thing i mean I, i was like nine Luke was six. He was three years younger than me. And we go back into this thing, and the uh, was I nine? Or was I ten? Who the hell's 10. Luke? Lukey, Swatelsky, Mara, and uh, why are you saying real people's names again? Because I'm but not. I'm anyway, not saying anything negative about them. That's why. Matter. But um, but we went back to the uh, the the thing, and we I forgot the, there was a third one. But we opened up the door. And it was completely covered. And it was just like fresh grass growing out of it. So it's not like someone just filled it with dirt. It was like it was it's like had been like that for years. So freaky. I don't buy any of that. Okay, fine, cool, whatever. You don't buy it. But it happened. It was flipping freaky. But yeah, I believe in ghosts, do you? No. Oh, okay. Why not? And I've been punched by one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tell me about being punched by a ghost, and then if you were, if you're saying you were punched by a ghost, why don't you believe in ghosts? Because they don't exist. I don't think they exist. If ghosts do exist, the movie White Noise has it correct. I've never seen it. Yeah. Be, yeah. Okay. But, how, but you're tell me about you got punched by a ghost. I mean, there's nothing to say. I was sleeping, and I got punched by a ghost. So you essentially slapped. I got punched and then slapped. So you essentially dreamt something and then woke up. Well, I wasn't sleeping. I was trying to sleep. Okay. So we were in Job Corps. Okay. I was in Job Corps, and yeah, it was apparently that place was haunted. Yeah. Apparent allegedly. Places are haunted. Um. Well, they're not if you don't believe in it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, I don't know what else you want from me. I was laying down, and I got punched in the ribs on the side. I was laying like this. I was laying on my side like this, and I got punched in the side, which caused me to go like this, and then I got slapped across the face. And uh, none of my roommates were home. So then what punched you and slapped you? Oh, nothing. Okay. I'm not sure if I buy any of that. I I I can tell you I don't buy your staircase going into a hill. All right. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, so this place was allegedly haunted. There was a lot of things that were going on with it. Like it was an abandoned asylum. It was an abandoned asylum. They f- uh filmed many Famous things there, like uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest was okay. filmed there. Um, I think parts of the ring were filmed there and yeah. everything like that. But yeah, it was an abandoned like medical asylum, and there was like a nurses' station that was com- completely condemned and boarded up, 
and wasn't allowed. Uh, nobody was allowed in there because apparently, like, at in the middle of the night, people could just hear, like, the nurses screaming. Because this was, like, a psych ward. Okay. Like, the sick... Like, it's, like there was sick and, and psycholo- psychologically um, <clears throat> ill people were there. So, like, this nurse's ward, like, they were constantly being attacked by the inmates, inmates, uh, patients. <laughs> um, I'm sure some of them were criminally insane. I mean, that place was, it was the last place a lobotomy was performed in the United, United States. Was it? Yeah, we went on a tour of the main uh, facility which was a condemned building so it was closed down but we got a tour of it um and there was still blood on the floor there was still blood on the floor like papers there's medical papers i knew people that s- took medical papers and equipment from this abandoned like it was literally just abandoned people left they said this place is closed and they could not go back for anything hmm. there were still like patient files and tools all over the place in there interesting yeah, it was a pretty crazy experience. People, you know, like this, these boarded up buildings, people would see um, the lights turn on and people walking in it, and they'd uh, call up to security, and we'd watch security drive down to this place, and they're like, yep, there's nothing here. No, we can still see the, the lights on with this dude walking around. All right. So did you experience any other haunting type stuff? Um, I, I, I mean, I personally didn't. I, I was just punched by the ghost. Uh, my buddy, um, he, he, he saw a weeping woman. Huh? Like in the asylum part? Or? No, in our dormitory. Okay. In our dormitory we were in. Because uh, like it, how it went, it was like you'd come into the door and then the hallway would go down and then it would branch out into like a T. And then um, when you at the end of the hallway, when you go down to the right, for some reason, there's this weird like cubby, like indent in the end of the th- the the hallway, like a cubby. And I don't know why it's there, but it was like maybe like three feet wide, maybe by like four feet deep, where you could kind of just sit and hide if you really wanted to. And uh, yeah, my buddy uh, saw a weeping woman there. And he was, like, asking her if she was okay and everything, and she was just weeping. And then he finally, like, got to her to see inside the cubby, and there was nobody there. He just saw the shadow. Okay. He saw the shadow of her, and there was nobody there. It's freaky. One of the dormitories, um, there was four dormitories there, and one of them was all male, and one of them was all female. And that's because um, how it works is all the dormitories were co-ed. Males lived on the bottom floor, and females always lived on the top floor. And legend has it was that the ones that were exclusively male, it used to be co-ed, except, um, again, this was on the second floor because that's where the women uh, slept and were there. But they would wake up in the middle of the night to people pounding on doors and their windows, and they would always wake up covered, covered in bruises and scratches. And this was only that one dormitory. But was on the this second floor. was this Job Corps people or the hospital people? This was Job Corps. Okay. This was Job Corps legend. That was crazy. I believe it. We had a one of the dorms uh, in Whitewater because Whitewater has the whole thing, but which is a Whitewater. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, three cemeteries, whatever. But my in the first week I was in college, my freshman year, first week I moved in. They're one of the cemeteries as part of the the witch's triangle is on campus and some kid got hung in it and like they released like the thing and or like the forensics whatever there was no sign of him climbing the tree there was he was like 10 feet in the air or like 12 feet or something like that but there's no sign of him climbing the tree there was no sign of a ladder or anything like that being there and there's no sign of any sort of struggle and so like it was just like what the heck how did this happen but that was that was week one of me being in college so that was pretty crazy. But there was one dorm that had multiple suicides in it while I was also there. One person hung themselves in their closet. But there was so many reports of, like, the entire floor woke up, like, would wake up multiple times to go out to the hallway to because all of their doors were pounded on simultaneously. And no one was there. And that, that was a story that happened multiple times. And everyone 
agreed. I don't think they had an entire like I don't think they had an entire floor just get together and be like, you know what, let's pull a prank on everyone because it happened year after year. Um. So yeah, so that was crazy. But then I got locked again, getting locked in a, a structure. I got locked inside of the uh, the um, water tower that was there. And legend has it that there's like there was angled, there was a surrounded by a fence and there was angled barbed wire at the top, but it was angled in. Because they didn't want to keep people out of it. They wanted to keep whatever's inside of it, inside of it. So me and a couple of my friends, we ended up putting a blanket over it, climbed over it, got inside the what the water tower, and all of a sudden we saw police cars coming and the police came and the door that we got in closed shut and locked us in. And we couldn't get out. And the police stayed there for probably like an hour and a half and was like, Yeah, we're not leaving, whatever. And then finally they ended up leaving. And once the police actually left, the door just went and just opened up. And so we then we got out. So it was like kind of like they're protecting us from the police. Mm. So that was pretty freaky, too. So I've had a couple of run-ins with weird things. Weird things. Yeah, weird things. Um, I mean, I guess that's weird. I mean, I, I've I'll, had a couple run in with weird things. I used to hang out with carnies. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I've had other things that aren't even haunted things, too. Like when I was out in Washington at one of my friends. Actually, house. we we have to pause everything. I am very sorry. I have to go to the bathroom. Good. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying. And uh, at, <laughs> here we were going to cut to an advertisement if we had an advertisement. Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys? Uh, you guys experienced any uh, ghost ghost happenings? Oh yeah, the house I grew up in, there was a lot of uh, stuff that could not be explained by like, oh, it was just a draft or it was just the house settling. I actually saw a little boy in my house that I initially thought was my brother because we were all afraid to like be upstairs by ourselves, and I was babysitting my siblings, so we were getting ready for bed. And my brother was in the bathroom, my sister and I were in our room waiting for him to be done. And I hear and see what I thought was him running down the hall. But then usually when he would come down the stairs, like you would see him turn the corner so I could hear the like the footsteps on the stairs, but I didn't see him and I was really confused. So I was calling his name and he's like, What? And I'm like, Where are you? And he's like, I'm in the bathroom. And he came out wearing totally different clothes than this kid, but it was like the same height. But it was really scary because I absolutely thought it was my brother for a second and then everybody else we've heard like footsteps we've had like doors rattle um my mom actually apologized to me when i was an adult because when we first moved in my brother and i heard noises in the attic and she's like oh it's just probably just an animal and like eventually throughout the years everybody experienced something and she actually apologized oh. <laughs> to me for like <laughs> not believing us yeah. See, so you believe in ghosts then? I believe in something. I don't know what it is, but I do believe in paranormal. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? I, I absolutely do uh, believe in ghosts or something adjacent to it for, uh, and for a very specific reason. I take into account the fact that, you know, there are spectrums of light that we can't perceive. There are spectrums of sound that we can't perceive. That already implies that there are things that exist in real life that are happening around us that we can't perceive. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, you know, I will, you know, there. I feel like I also believe there are some people who, you know, brains have developed differently and therefore are better equipped to be able to experience certain things of that nature. I have personally never. I can't recall any story I can think of where I've had a supernatural experience, but given what I know about existence and how it works, it's hard for it would be hard for me to deny the idea that there are things beyond my perception that are out there. Okay, that's a good perspective to have. Does that make sense? Yeah, my uh, my parents, I mean at least my mom would say that she I think she believes in ghosts. Um, the first house we lived in uh, was small little house, whatever, but it was like 
uh, I think it was his godparents. I don't think they were my godparents. I'm not exactly sure who mine are, but it was his godparents and their little daughter who was like four died in, in a house fire. And the, I think the daughter would have possibly been able to survive if her door was closed. Cause they always tell you to leave doors closed. Don't leave them open because of the spreading of the fire, but her door is open. Me and my brother used to sleep with the door open a little bit, just slightly. Um, but our doors touched the carpet, so you it would all you would always hear it brushing against the carpet. And after uh, they died in the house fire, uh, my mom swears every t- every night she would our door would be open and she would hear it brush against the carpet and close. And so she believes that it was them coming to protect us in case there was a fire. I'm back. Hello. Yeah, while you were gone, we proved that ghosts are real. Yeah, we proved it. Oh. Without a reasonable <laughs> doubt, yeah. Well, let's get Patrick Swayze in here. <laughs> here he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Swayze! <laughs> I just found out that Kat Dennings plays Stardew Valley, and she will not be physically okay until the new update comes out. Who's Kat Jennings? Kat Dennings. Dennings, yeah. Um, she is uh, the dark-haired one from Two Broke Girls. Oh. She is from In Nick Marvel. and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Yeah, she is from uh, the Thor movies. Yep. Yeah. Yes, that's Kat Dennings. Okay. She's from The Defendor. She's got you, a you, you, I know who she is now. You don't need to keep going. <laughs> I don't know what else she was in anyways. No, Any, anything else besides that? Things. Movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Ghosts. Did you just keep going this entire time? Yeah. Uh, okay. I asked them about their opinions on ghosts and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. And we came to the conclusion that ghosts aren't real. But so they are real. Nah. They are 100% <laughs> real. Um, cool. So, how did you figure that out? Oh, Nigel just said so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then I guess I guess we got a point then. Yeah. And ghosts are real, everybody. Yep. You heard it here. On two rights make a wrong. So, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about your bomb box? My bomb box? My bomb box, yeah. So, so let me let me preface this let me let me start this off (laughs) several years ago he had a house and you went on vacation in the middle of the winter correct is this when that happened was it was it winter time is that you had a pipe burst is that what happened no no it it was um it was just roots blocked up Mm. the pipe okay so your entire basement flooded (laughs) with feces with with feces yeah your entire basement flooded which you got lucky enough to find out because you had asked our dad to go mother-in-law but deal with the birds mother-in-law i thought it was dad that found it no she he went he took a couple days off of work to pump out the basement Mm. because it kept filling up but she's the one who found it okay so your basement was completely filled with this water and um dad went to go take care of it and you panicked him because you told him that there was a box underneath your desk that i didn't want him to move i told him you just leave it that he was not allowed to touch move or look inside because yes, he was going through stuff and we were like oh like here's your box of hot wheel cars i'll move that oh there's a box of like dvds i'll move that and like well, was, there is there is a box and he was and he was scared and because he this scared. box he thought this box had a lot of bombs in it like bombs and explosives for some reason i don't know what in the world he was thinking about for some reason he thought i had bombs in a box yeah i don't know why and wait because it wasn't going to be drugs it wasn't going to be drugs he he had there's no reason why he would ever think that i would have drugs which makes sense but i don't know why he thought i had bombs so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask the question and before you answer i would like you to leave like five to ten seconds worth of silence before you answer okay Okay. 
what was in that box? I'm going to give you the same answer I gave you when you called me on vacation. So I he, needed to know what was inside this box. He called me. He he just I'm like, "Yeah, what's going on?" He goes, "So, what's inside the box?" And so I just started laughing, and my response was married people stuff parents don't need to know about. So you had a box of sex toys. I did. In your basement. I did. That you didn't want dad to open and find out. <laughs> it's very because true. it was yes. flooded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now can I ask the next question? Sure. What kind of sex toys? I mean, sex toys. <laughs> kind of sex toys. I mean, lots of them. Like, yeah, what kind? <sighs> Dildos. Four. D- uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the answer I was looking for. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, ball gag. There's some bondage stuff in there. Nice. So, yeah, so fun, fun stuff. I don't know if the camera's picking this up. Something. Oh, nice. Something. This card's full, too? What the heck? <laughs> well, I'm glad the camera probably missed your face turn 17 shades redder. Was it 17 shades of red? That's going to be the next 50 <laughs> shades of gray movie. It's going to be 17 shades, shades of, of red. My face. It's just no, Danny. The, the, con- the, uh, the conversation... <laughs> For everyone <laughs> is iconic. I hope that got caught. At least some audio. Oh, it's caught. It, everything's caught, and then there's the GoPro. So we do have a secondary camera that is catching everything. Oh, good. Yeah. Clap. Yes, so that was the story of my bomb box. Yeah, you were saved by, uh, so yeah. I mean, so what have you experimented with, sir? A lot, I guess. I don't know. Do you have a bomb box? No. (laughs) I don't. And I also don't have dildos for everyone. (laughs) Just for himself. (laughs) Selfish son of a bee. Yeah. Um... So you shared that story. So I feel like I have to share like an embarrassing story. Sure, a yeah. little bit too. Go for it. Um, this was. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story about how I met some friends. It was my girlfriend's best friends at the time. Which girlfriend? The l- tiny one. Okay. Um, so she brings me to. Her best friend's house, who is married with kids. We're having a good old time to hang out in the basement. And I had to go to the bathroom. I had to poop, to be exact. And I did. And I clogged the toilet. Now, mind you, I'm very I'm very strange about bathrooms. I don't like I will physically hurt myself to hold my poop in so I can go into a bathroom I'm comfortable in and it sure as hell ain't somebody's house especially somebody that I just met for the first time okay so I ended up having to clog the toilet mind you this girlfriend was relatively new not to a point where I could be like hey honey I clogged the toilet again nope this was a horrifying experience for her to have to deal with so I was like hey I did this. And she goes, oh, crap. So we're trying. Literally. We're trying to deal with it. And then the toilet overflows. So we're standing there and we have no idea what to do. And at this point, now I have taken a while in the bathroom. But not only have I taken a while, but I had to call my girlfriend for assistance. So now people are curious. (laughs) 
And the first thing that happens was the seven-year-old daughter comes running in all of a sudden and starts screaming as she's seeing the water pour out of the toilet. And uh, I have a question quick. Yeah. Was this in a house or was yeah. this an apartment? This was in a house. A house, okay. I was going to say, was this the second floor of an apartment? No, this was <laughs> in a house. So the seven-year-old comes, she she comes, she sees this, and she just starts screaming. I cannot control my laughter, and neither can the girlfriend. At this point, now the five-year-old son comes, and he goes, what's coming on? And at this point, or he goes, what's going on? And at this point, the water is now everywhere. It's going out into the hallway to the point where this kid comes, and he goes, what's going on? And he literally slips on the water, gets airborne, lands on his back into the water of the toilet. Everybody's screaming. Everybody's laughing. And I had to just, I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going home. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't know what you wanted from me at that point. So you didn't even help fix it? You just, you just peaced out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I, I'm pretty sure I stuck around to fix it okay. and help out. Because I stayed friends with them for a while after that. So. Well, I felt like I had to. We trauma bonded. How often do you think The Rock clogs his toilet? I mean, I think he has custom built toilets, like custom piping. Because he eats a lot. But, I mean, he has to have custom piping. There's no way a log coming out of that man can go down a regular pipe. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. It's a lot of protein. Yeah. So. But also, he's probably never had to deal with him himself either, so. I mean, who else would have to deal with that? A who else? Who else has the strength to unclog that toilet? Well, I'm just saying, if it gets clogged. I feel like he needs to Excalibur that. I mean, honestly, he'll probably just move. <laughs> <laughs> just the rock has, like, it just, he, he just waits to us to go to the bathroom. Uh, this house is done for. Yeah. He moves. He's, he moves, house. like, four or five times a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Dwayne. <laughs> why do you why do you say it like that? <laughs> Cuz it's his name. What's What's the Rock's real name? Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne. 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 Real easy. Dwayne, not Dwayne. Dwayne. Hey, my name Dwayne. When I say it like that. So our one of our butlers in Jamaica, his name was Dwayne. Yeah, but that's not who so The Rock is. So that's when I started saying Dwayne. Th- but th- th- they're two different names. I understand. But that's when I started saying it was after Jamaica, so. Dwayne Douglas Johnson. Douglas? His middle name's Douglas. Did not know that. Yeah, I just DDJ. Found, I just found out that Jack Black's real name is Thomas. His first name is Thomas? No, it's Thomas Jacob Black. That's his full name. I'm that name makes me picture someone completely different. Tom, Thomas, Jacob Black. Thomas Black. Yeah. That makes me picture someone completely different than Jack Black. I cannot imagine him. It was there someone else in like the Screen Actors Guild, whatever, that had the name, that he had to change it. I don't know. Uh, that I do not know. I don't know. Can you look that up? Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, and where'd you learn this? Uh, from Dion Twerd. There's a bunch what? of Thomas Blacks. Tom Black. Tommy Black. Just type in Thomas Jack Black. Well, there is one for Thomas Jacob. That's, that's the Jack Black we're, I think we're talking about. That is him. And so what, where did you learn this from? Deontward. And what's that? A band. A rap group. And they, did they rap about it or did they like have a conversation with you and tell you? like? Well, they have a song with him and he is credited as Thomas Jack Black. Okay. Is Jack short for Jacob? Apparently for him it is. Okay. I wasn't sure. I mean, I don't know if he came up with it's, Jack. It's better. It's else. it's better than somebody named Margaret being called Peggy. It's true. Yeah. 
true. Anyway, so or William, did you find something now? William or? Bill, not what we wanted. Just his parents are satellite engineers. No, oh, okay, all right, yep. His mom actually was an electrical engineer on the Minuteman missile. Oh, okay. and science ground station for the Hubble Space Telescope. She did actually kind of. She's actually credited for the abort guidance system, which helped save uh, Apollo 13. So she's a, she's a hero. Okay. That's very interesting. That is crazy interesting. And this is this is the musician slash actor Jack Black's mom. And you that's confirmed. It isn't some this isn't someone else named Thomas Jacob. Breyer. I've heard this before, but okay. like according to Wikipedia. Which is truth. Wikipedia is just one hundred percent truth. But that's pretty cool. That is really cool. It kinda makes sense though. What does your mom ever do? <laughs> the same as your mom. That's true. <coughs> so, um, yeah, Deantward. Deantward? Deantward? Okay. Die Ant Word. If okay. you have to say it really white. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty white. Yeah. We're, they're from South Africa. Oh. So are they white? They are white, yes. Okay. The two of them are. Cool. Yeah. But they speak a couple different languages. And yeah, Deontward is Africanese. All right. For the answer. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, nice jersey. Thanks. Have you been following them? No. That's good. I've fallen off of keeping in on track. Yeah. Um, so we're talking earlier to mom, though, about her favorite animal being sheep. Yeah. And I, so, like, I just kind of want to get to know you again because I haven't known really known you for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite animal before you answer? I'm going to make a guess of what it, because of what I know it used to be. Mm -hmm. But I also have a feeling that there's another animal in there. So, wolf, mm -hmm. that was your favorite animal. Mm -hmm. Is it still? Mm -hmm. And then two, sea turtle? No. That was never a thing? I mean, they're cool, but no. I thought I thought for some reason that was, like, also your favorite animal. I feel like every child kind of gets into, like, a sea turtle phase. Okay. Yeah. Because every child's like, eh, I want to, like, not have a straw through a sea turtle's nose. Yeah. Which... I don't understand how that even happened. Yeah, that one that did. I saw a movie that that happened once. Somebody was doing coke and somebody hit him in the back of the head and the straw went into their nose at that point. Oh. Like that that's the only thing I could think of is a sea turtle doing coke. Wait, do you do coke through a straw? Sure. Oh, I, I mean, thought I, I've just seen it in movies where people just go I mean, that's a little bump, yeah. Oh, okay. Otherwise, if you're doing a line you would you need uh I've seen people do like the rolled something. up dollar bills. Yep, that's a straw. Okay, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose that's a straw, yeah. Yep. All right. Do they make like crack straws? Okay, so crack or cocaine straws, whatever. <laughs> What's the difference between crack and cocaine? Uh crack is smoked. And why is that okay, so but is crack co squares and rectangles yep. is crack cocaine? Cocaine is crack, but crack is not cocaine. Then why do they call it crack cocaine? Because crack cocaine is the drug overall. Okay. Right. So no, I, I don't know. You tell me. So so you can take you can take the crack and you can shave it down and yet and, uh, and and yada yada yada. You can do so many different things with it to turn it into coke. But crack is the rocked up version of the powdery coke. Wait, have I just had that wrong? I thought it was the other way around. Crack. Crack is smoked. It's the rock. Well, no, I I, I, yeah. I know how they are consumed. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought you turned cocaine into crack. It can go both ways. It, it because of how you how it's cut and everything like that. It can go both ways. You can get coke from crack, and you can get crack from coke. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah I think it's like um, I don't remember. Okay. 
Yeah, you can. Yeah, as far as I know, you can go both ways. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, do they make then cocaine straws that are like specifically optimized for snorting cocaine? You know, I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, he, I, I'm gonna say yes, but I'm gonna say for all intents and purposes, no. Okay. You'd have to be like. Honestly, you'd have to be like Whitney Houston and, and like Bobby Brown to get your own like snooter. Like that's just something that you get. Like that's not something that's made. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure I get your reference. They were notorious cokeheads. Oh, were they? <laughs> yes. I have no idea. Very, very notorious. So yeah, I mean, at that point, you might want to. You know, get yourself like if you're gonna get into it, you might want to get yourself a personal t- straw. Yeah, I well, guess I'm not looking to get into it, but yeah, but just right. good to know. Can we say like crack and cocaine on the YouTube's? Is that something we can say anything we want on YouTube? Can we? For the most part, okay. I think we can't threaten people, and I mean, yeah, obviously, if there starts to be like legitimate like racial insults, I think they start. Yeah. And what about? On Spotify. Sure you probably don't want to say you want to be monetized. Yeah, um, well, apparently that it's they just changed that like a year ago. See, I know they changed it, but I cha- they changed it for profanity. I don't know if they changed it about talking about illicit drugs. Well, we can talk about it all we want. That's There's nothing wrong with talking about drugs. For monetization purposes, though. There, I don't okay. think there's anything wrong with talking about it. Okay. As long as we're not doing them. Okay. That's the difference. All right. And we're not telling people to go do them either. No, don't do drugs. Most of them. <laughs> um, so, the, yeah. All right. So, there's that. So, yeah, I mean, I guess. So, and then, and then on top of that, there's, like, a lot of different ways to go, like, to do all of them, technically. Like, especially with crack. There's several different ways to smoke crack. Okay. I don't know. Mhm. There's the tire gauge way. There's the aluminum foil. There's hot rails. Sure. Mhm. Cool. At this point, problem. you could just start making stuff up. He's just like. Well, with him, yeah. Well, I'm not gonna make it up because no, the internet. Yeah. The internet will know. I just, I just really enjoyed his his response. He's just like, sure, <laughs> whatever yeah. you say, yeah. sure, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah. But I think we can move off crack and cocaine. Though. So, but really quick, just to say things like that. Uh, going back to, do they make straw specifically for that? They might, but they're not going to sell them in a store because they can't get away with selling them. Well, I mean, what about in like Oregon? You still can't because it's not legal. You can't sell that type of paraphernalia. In fact, like up until it was legal in the certain states that it's legal in right now, if you were to go into a shop to buy yourself a pipe to smoke weed out of, you are not allowed to call it a weed pipe. It is a pipe meant for tobacco use only. Okay. Well, what about? It's like you're like you. Uh, there were places like they would kick you out of the store if you called it a bong. It's not a bong. It is a tobacco water pipe. Okay. So. What, which I don't understand because there's literally you. We drive down the freeway here, and there's literally a bong recreation. But that's park. A, that's a name that 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 has nothing to do with the instrument, the oh. smoking instrument oh, called a, a bong. Oh, I thought it was a smoking park. No, that long that existed long. No, that's before. a nature preserve. Yeah. Oh, and it's called just the bong yes. park. Oh, I thought it was a smoking park. No, <laughs> no, and it would definitely would not exist in Wisconsin. All right, um, but. Uh, Okay. Interesting. Na- named after Richard Bong. Who's that? The uh, the guy who made Bong Recreation. Oh, <laughs> is it? Is that true? Yeah, that's the, like actual. Okay. Interesting. Okay, cool. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah, the more I know. What else do you want to know? What else can I answer you? Oh. Oh. 
I feel like you learned a lot today. I did learn a lot today. <laughs> Nothing that you'll ever use. Nope. In life. Um. Is your favorite Pokemon still Sandshrew? One of them. Okay. Yep. Now, have your favorite Pokemon. Um. Have you developed new favorite Pokemon as new generations have come out? Yeah. And what about the most recent generations? Yeah. Okay, because I like them. Like I had like two generations that I had favorite Pokemon's in the first two, mm-hmm. and then there's like one Pokemon in the latest generation. And I'm like, that's a cool Pokemon. Um, yeah, there's some Pokemon that I really like in all of them. I'm like, there's like you know from the original game, it's Radada and Sandshrew. Like those are my two, those are my two boys. So when they both got regional variants, I was so excited. Yeah, that was awesome. And then, you know, we go Gen 2, and, and I'm a big fan of Cyndaquil and Heracross. Cyndaquil, yep. Cyndaquil is my favorite. And then I think Gen 3 is where we get Flygon from. The Dragonfly, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorites as well. Mm-hmm. Metro Pinch going, evolving into there. I really like Salazzle. The lizard. The female yeah. lizard. Female lizard. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big fan Wait, of isn't it? But that's the evolution, right? Because only the females evolve. Yes. And what's the D of evolution form called? I can't remember. Sandlit or something like that? Okay. Sand, yeah, something like that. And only like 10% of the Pokemon. It's a 12.5% are born. To, or Yeah, female. you can get a 12.5% to get female. Right. Which it's, to me, in my personal opinion, besides Mew, it is the hardest shiny Pokemon to get in the game. Is it? In my opinion. Okay. Because no, I, I not get it. because you have to find a shiny, and it has to be, and then it has to be female. female. So the reason why I said it, it, it's kind of a cheat, but the reason why I say it's not the hardest shiny to get in a game is because they literally had a download code from GameStop to get it, a shiny one. So which I got. Oh. So yeah. like to me, it's like if you that's, want it, like everyone could have gotten it. That's. That's not that. That's different. Yeah, but to find but in the game, yeah, I agree. To find in the game, it'd be hard. But like, all also uh, shiny in Arceus, uh, the shiny Arceus too, because the only way to get it is to beat the whole game and get to that. So you fight it one time, and in order to get it to be a shiny, is so rare. There's only like a handful of people that have gotten a shiny one. It's kind of like Mew. Yeah. That's that's almost more impossible. And you have to spend money. Oh, do you have to spend money? You have to buy one of the Pokeballs. Oh, but that's... Oh, yeah, because they started the... Yes. And it's like one in... Because they didn't start one Shinies in, until more recently. One in 3,000 chance to get one. And it's the only way to get one is from inside that Pokeball. Yeah. So those Pokeballs have shot up in price because of that. Okay. Yeah, I tried buying one... And I went to the store because they said I had like 10 in stock. And I went into the store. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, someone just bought them all. Yeah. I'm like, oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, it was a Target because I wanted one. So how's One Piece going? It's fine. Who's your favorite so far? I know you're not that far in. But out of the out of the four people that you've known, the four crew members that are there, how, how who is your favorite? You've got Luffy, Zoro, Nami, and Usopp. Does the does the chef with the one leg become part of their crew? Does he become their chef? The chef with the one leg? Yeah. Zef? Sure. Hell no. He's a captain, brah. I don't know who's captain. I just no, you get you get you get the pervert instead. I have I don't Yeah, you do. It's Sanji. I don't know if I've met Sanji yet. Yes, you did. He's the blonde with the smoking. He's in oh, the suit. The sous chef. Yeah, the yeah who, who the guy calls a waiter all the time and yeah. then, like beats the guy up. Yeah, hey, you get Sanji. I don't so know. That's but your... you said he got, you get the pervert. I, there's nothing he's done that's been a pervert oh. so far. So He's a fucking pervert. Okay. Um, There's literally a story arc later on where he needs a tra- blood transfusion is because the trope of like, you know, the anime trope yeah, of yeah, when yeah, people yeah, get yeah. horny, their mm-hmm. nose bleeds. Yep. Yeah, he's so fucking horny. There's so much blood coming out of his nose that he needs a blood transfusion. All right. Makes sense. How's that? Makes sense. Um, so I guess I mean. Oh 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 oh. Okay. Um. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not into it yet. I'm just not into it. Yeah, you'll get there. So I don't know. I feel like it's just you're watching it in English. I mean, I'd be even less connected if I was watching it in Japanese. Well, that's just because you can't pay attention then. What do you mean I can't pay? I can pay attention. What do you mean? You have a hard time watching the 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 subbed stuff, don't you? Well, because it would go by so I wouldn't be able to read it fast enough. Right. Yeah. So I, I would have no idea what's going it. on. That's so weird. What's weird? Watching it in English? You're, you're just not into One Piece. Yeah, I mean, but you said it, I it, it, I have to be like episode 42 in order before yeah, I'm really going to get into it. So I'm I, halfway I guess, there. I guess. So. You'll be there. You'll get there. And then you won't want to stop. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I like it that much. I hope so, too. It'd be really disappointing if you didn't. You'd be like the only person in the world. Yeah, I mean, cool. I've always been unique. That's not unique. That's just wrong. <laughs> oh, but what's coming out soon? The remake, Final, uh, One Piece what you, remake. No, not that. Yeah, even sooner no, than the, that. No, a couple months, the no, whole series is even, being remade. Even sooner than that. Oh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Nope, even sooner than that. <laughs> um, Sandland. Nope. My favorite. Oh, the Avatar. Isn't that? I thought that was out already. So 22nd. Hmm. I mean, it might be out by the time that this airs. But as of right now, as of recording, it is not out yet, and I'm so excited for it. It just Fair better enough. be good. It just not, better not. It better bloat M. Night Shyamalan's version out of the water. I don't, that was atrocious. I think it's going to take all of the inspiration from Shyamalan. From the trailers I've seen. I mean, I can already tell you that it's quite different because the like earth benders and well the benders just as a whole aren't doing choreographed dance scenes for a little rock to go hovering across the screen. Yeah. That was one of the worst things. Yeah, they're really bad. The the the, uh, the last airbender movie was really bad for their their bending abilities. Yeah, and he had a flip in contract to do all three books. And oh, it he was, n- it was so bad. That, but they, but then for some reason they ended up letting him co-write uh, Legend of Korra. Mister M is still under the impression that he is still getting two more movies to finish. Mister M is that Shyamalan? Well, his name is M Night Shyamalan. What's his first name? Uh, yeah. So somebody can find that for us, please. Because it's M Dot Night. Yeah, it's M Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Shamulan. So it's spelled M A N O J. Minaj. Minaj. The N. Then there's another part that's N E L L I Y A T T U. Okay, so wait. Next question. Where is he from? He's Indian. From like India, India? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I was okay with him until that movie came out and I lost essentially all respect for him because he ruined one of my favorite things ever. I, uh, yeah. I, I've never, I always try to give him a chance, but I don't know if I'd actually say I'm a fan of his movies. Yeah. I mean, I was never a fan either. I was fine with him. I had no issue with him. I had an issue with how people reacted to his movies. Because the people thought they were great? Or what? No. That wasn't what it was. Okay. So I just remember Signs. Which I actually liked Signs. It was decent, but... The scene that everybody considers scary was the least scary thing I've ever fucking seen. Was it the was it the like the, the home the birthday party the and when they first see the alien walk by? Yeah, and he did one of those he did one of those stupid uh Sasquatch walks. Yeah. For 2 seconds yeah. that was literally the least scary thing that's ever happened. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't even a jump scare. He no. literally just did one of these things. And then looked at the camera, yeah. 
But like I will tell you, it was bad. It was not scary. <laughs> it wasn't. It did not. It, I know friends because I watched it for the first time with friends who like at that age, which was what was that, two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah, somewhere somewhere around there. And I have friends who were scared by it. I was not scared. It was not a jump scare. It was not scary. But when I saw it, I was just like, holy crap. Like, I did have a reaction to it. What? Yeah, because I just thought it was cool. Mm. I was just like, oh. We actually got – because I thought we were going to go the whole movie without ever seeing it. That I, – I prefer when movies do things like that. Like – um <clears throat> what's Bird that? Box. Yeah. Oh, that was so much better. I could, didn't so like Bird Box. So much better. I didn't like Bird Box. I'm so glad that they didn't show us the monster. I didn't like it. They just saw it showed drawings of what people were seeing. Yeah. But um but like the happening, but the bird box was just kind of like the happening, which was an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Well, wasn't that just trees? It was plants, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was plants. But like but it was essentially the same movie, just with a different thing doing it. Yeah. So I was I kinda was just kind of like eh. But the only thing I don't like about like they, they explain it where it's like the chemical in the air that the plants were sending out made people like lose the ability to sense danger. Right. Which fine. I can totally buy that. That's a real science thing. That was, that's an actual chemical that are in plants that can do that to people. But that does not mean someone's going to pull out their like needle thing from their hair and just stick it into their neck. Like they were actually committed or late or start a lawnmower and then lay down in front of the lawnmower. Like that is not, not having a sense for danger. That is, deliberately going out of your way to like kill yourself in a gruesome way like that's that was the thing that i couldn't get on board with for that movie yeah i just feel like m night tries to just take all the ideas that nobody's on board with and he just tries to shove them in a movie it's kind of what he does and let me tell you not apologizing to M. Night next week. Oh, no. Absolutely not. Yeah, he's made a series of not-so-great stuffs. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm just... Like, I'm, I'll always give him a try because, like, he's got... He's got a vision. I'll give him that much. He's got a vision. It's not 2020, but he's got a vision. Yeah. So I'll give him that much. Like, I wanted to see, actually, the movie, like, Knock at the Cabin Door or whatever. It's the newest one with David Batista in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, I actually wanted to see that. Batista? Yeah. But, like, but I just, pe- pe- it came out and people told me it was, like, just such an atrocious movie. How did, how did you just say his last name? Batista. What is it? I thought you said it really weird there for a second. David he's, Batista. He's just Batista. Oh, I thought it was Bautista. That's just Batista. Oh, I thought it was B-A-U. He's been known as Batista way too long. How's it spelled? Is it spelled B-A-U or is it B-A? I think it's B-A-U. So it would be Bau. Bau. But that's Bautista. not how he pronounces it. Okay, whatever. It's not what WWE's been screaming in our faces for. Is he in years. WWE? He is Batista. B-A-U-T-I-S-T-A. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's Batista. I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I don't follow it. Yeah. I couldn't name a single wrestler. In, in in that's ever wrestled. The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> CM Punk. No, I mean John Cena. Cena. I know. Oh, I the thought you Undertaker. said just died for a second. I was gonna be like, what? Oh, you know who did? Toby Keith just died. Did he really? Yeah, he had stomach cancer. Well, it said really. It said he died following his diagnosis of stomach cancer. That was the headline that I read. Which I don't know if he just got diagnosed with it and it was so bad he died. Or if he's been struggling with it for years. He's had it for a little bit because my grandma okay. passed away from it. But she, between finding out she had it and passing away, it was like six weeks. But he's had it for like two oh, or has three he? years. Right. But he looked, the picture that they had, he looked terrible. Oh, wow. He looked bad. I'm but sorry, like, Toby Which Keith. I don't know if dad heard because like, I can tell you because like dad liked Toby Keith back in the day, which I did too. And I can tell you he has that CD changer in his truck. And he has he has had the same six CDs in that thing ever since he's had that truck. Two Dixie Chick CDs. It's because he doesn't listen to music like that. Two Toby Keith CDs, a Charlie Daniel CD, and then I think like an Almond Brother CD. And that's <laughs> none of the music that he listens to, like nine times out of ten. Oh. So, yeah, that's the weirdest thing. 
does he even listen to music anymore? I mean, I'm sure he listens to whatever's on the radio. But he always turns on like just talk stuff. I think I think he listens to whatever's on the radio. Um. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he was in WWE. I had no idea. I don't know what's going on with that at all. I mean, again, I knew the Undertaker, Sting. Oh, Sting was my boy. Like I know those wrestlers. But do they even do like nowadays in it? Do they even do these like themed costume wrestlers? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Because whenever I see clips of it or whatever, it's it's just they're in like tight underwear or whatever and just big and muscly. Like that's what I see now. Well, it all depends on who it is, but like there are certain people that still do things like that. Um, a lot of times the gimmicks these days. In fact, I'm pretty sure Nigel could talk about wrestling way better than I could, right? Yep. Okay. Oh yeah. But uh, who who's some of the current more current people that like have like a grandiose persona, like masks and face paint and and they're undead and bullshit, like the Undertaker and all those people used to be back in the nineties. Is anybody like that? Like, does Ray Mysterio Jr. still wear a luchador mask? Oh yeah, no, he yeah, he still very much embodies uh, the luchador. Uh... But he doesn't wrestle much anymore either. He's like kind of retired now, right? No, he, he he's he's still as far as I know. I mean, I don't. Or did he just so step back? Like, I don't actually really follow wrestling like I use. Uh, I don't watch it like I used to. I for some reason still. <laughs> so, I don't really watch wrestling like I used to. But for some reason, I do still follow it occasionally. I just like knowing what's going on between all the different companies and uh, blah 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 blah. Um, in terms of like big grandiose personas, um. I definitely, like, the last one we really had where it was somebody, you know, kind of doing, like, the undead dead thing or whatever um, was, uh, I forget uh, what his name was, but he actually passed away, like, um, I think a little over a year ago at this point. Um, and the problem is I don't really think there's a whole lot of, you know, you know, big, grandiose gimmicks really anymore. I know one... Uh, rest i can think of uh who does sort of like face paint uh, related stuff is uh uh azuka uh, i think she's in the uh wwe mm -hmm. um whether or not she's still doing the fit or maybe she's not in the wwe anymore um there's one dude in uh AEW, and i don't remember his name but he's uh he does the face paint thing and he was kind of uh you know teaming up with uh sting and sting was on his you know way out the door to finally retire and stuff I thought Sting died. Sting was huh? my favorite. No, who's the, who's the one who fell and died? No, I think he's he, he's planning to retire this year. Oh, okay. you think uh, the you you you, you Owen, Hart. Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Bret Hart's still alive. Owen Hart was the one that fell out the cage and died. And that was actually real messed up because at the time, um, like it, it like it when you watch the footage back, it's like it, it's horrible. Like you can hear Jim Ross like on the commentary, like literally telling people like. Yo, like th th this is not uh this is not kayfabe. Like this is not a this is not a work. This is not an act. This is like, like this man is actually seriously because like when they carried him off on the stretcher, like he wasn't pronounced dead quite yet. Um, but yeah, no, that it, it ended up killing. Um, back to the initial uh, question. Yeah, I uh, I don't really think there's a whole lot of big you know grandiose stuff. And actually, what's funny to me is as of right now. Like the two big companies, the WWE and AEW, and it almost kind of seems like they're in like this competition to see who can like fuck up their company the worst. There's a lot of shit <laughs> going on. There's a lot of shit going on with Vince McMahon, right? Oh yeah, no, um, big big scandal with him. Uh, the who who knew the guy that was really good at playing a uh, you know filthy rich you know evil millionaire was actually a filthy <laughs> rich evil millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> so who is? Did Triple H take over then? Yeah, Triple H okay, is cool. uh, head of uh, creative right now. Cool. That was the last time that I watched. Last time that I watched the WWF. And what's it, what's it called now? WWE. It's called WWE now. It's the WWE. Oh, see, I thought I thought WWE was like a decade ago. Well, that's what they changed into a decade ago. Right, but then I thought after after that, I thought it was Raw. That's just an event. That's Monday Night Raw. Raw and SmackDown, those are those are like basically separate uh, shows under the WWE. 
Um, like you would have Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown, but oh. like they're of the same company. Yeah. So you know they can like interact with each other okay. you know, yeah. and stuff like that. Get pump out more storylines. There's stuff even like a that. faction uh, that's been around for a couple years now called NXT, which is basically, you know, where wrestlers, you, you know, it you get TV time and stuff like that, but it's basically, you know, basically the place wrestlers go for development. Yeah. You know, it's the, you know, you can basically graduate from NXT and get on one of the big shows like SmackDown or Raw. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like. I I remember like yeah when I stopped watching wrestling, was right when um, Triple H married Vince McMahon's daughter Stephanie, and she was passed out, and they went through a drive-through, and he literally like put her put his hand over on there, and she's like, I do marry him. It was like a really bad gimmick. It was really bad. But yeah, Sting was my boy back in the day. Yeah, I liked Undertaker. Mhm. We need to get a we need to get a video game, a WWE video game. It's like a hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. Well, what was the um? It's one of the other like I think it might be one of the other Holy Grail like video games, whatever. But that clay wrestling. Oh yeah. On N sixty four, that's an expensive game. On sixty four. Yeah. Clay, uh, they have on Super Nintendo Clay too. Fighter sixty three and one quarter. Oh yeah, uh huh. That was exactly what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, because all the sixty four games wanted to call themselves like Mario sixty four. Yeah, so they yeah. And for some reason, they called themselves sixty three and one quarter. Yeah, but yeah, that was uh, I think that's a really expensive game now. I saw it for sale. Someone had it on Facebook Marketplace. Nice. Yeah. That was a. Uh, Interesting game, actually. Those are pretty fun games. How long have we been going on here for? Hour 20. Oh. We should probably wrap things up then. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. yeah. You, do you have anything else you need to say here right away? I don't have anything else I need to say. Yeah. Hmm. I uh, just see the word love of birds. Yep, love of birds. And with that... You never asked me what my favorite animal was. I didn't think I could. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite animal i mean i love birds <laughs> cool. birds you got it you got it honestly with y'all just talking about wwe it would have been absolutely perfect if you would have pulled one of the rocks moves like what's your favorite animal and he starts talking it doesn't matter what's your favorite animal. <laughs> that would have damn can we rewind this <laughs> rewind this let's do that and then i stone cold stunner you okay I don't know what that is. I mean, I'd probably break your neck because I don't know how to do it appropriately. Mm, yeah. And you don't know how to land appropriately. Right. So, um, Yeah, I love birds. I miss my birds. Bugatti. Woke up in a new Bugatti. Yeah. Did, Woke up next to Johnny Did Riss. he attack you? Who? Bugatti. No. No, he didn't? No. Because he went to feed him the one time? No. Okay. I fed him a couple times. Yeah. But no, okay. he's never attacked me. That's good. Clamped on the dad's finger one time, and dad's just like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. That's good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Well, have fun with your high-performance socks. Thanks, man. They're comfy. And thanks, guys, for coming in to uh, – tuning into a new episode of Two Rights Make a Wrong. Yeah. And thanks and you to know, you know, you know the deal. I, you know, I, I think every other podcast always says it, so you should know the rules by now. But, you know, like, subscribe, do all that fucking jazz, you know, and then uh, support us so we can support you. Yeah, comment on our videos. Negative, positive, doesn't matter. Just put comments out. Do that. Yeah. Make fun of us all you want. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Actually, leave comments that don't even have anything to do with the content. Just have your own conversations in the comment section. Yeah. Watch a different youtube video and then comment and then comment about that youtube video on on our, our underneath video, yeah. this episode yes best comment wins yep you win nothing yeah <laughs> not even but a you win. Out. <laughs> all right all right yeah cut <laughs> clapping
Beautiful. Do you know the purpose of the clap? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why I, I keep doing I, it so randomly. I taught I taught him that during our first one. He's like, "What are you doing that for?" I'm like, "It lines up the audio in this and the mm-hmm. video." And you know, and then yeah, he told know, me this. Here, tell me, uh, let me tell you this story. So last week, I'm hanging out with my buddy Justin. Now, mind you, Justin's gay.